Industry Invaders. You know it is your boy Cam 1111. This YouTube's Ricky of the Year, and I'm back with an absolute banger. Shout out to Maddie Balls, no Diddy. But before we get into this absolute banger, happy Mother's Day, happy Sunday. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you're new. Rappers who fake their entire image. Let's go. No intro needed. No intro needed at all. Happy Mother's Day. Historically, it's been important to have a all the mothers across the world, dog. But not everyone who has made music in this genre is like that. Some people are honest about it, but other people were likely too insecure. But let's see, who do y'all think is on this list? Um, I know Rick Ross on this list 100. percent I know Six Nine is on this list 100. percent Um, Slim Jesus might make another appearance. Um. Who else y'all think? Y'all name, name some comments, man. Image. So today we're gonna or be names for people, my bad. Names for people in the image. comments. Starting off with Rick Ross. Oh he's boy, damn, he number one. Mean, these guys are shaming them. Oh Prevent boy, shout out Matty Balls, no deal. something negative, but many fans incredible find it very disingenuous work you do about your lifestyle. And to be honest, the drama that sponsors. I think Prince Montana will be on here too. So let's check it out. Let's go. Rick Ross has created a career that many young aspiring rappers could only dream of. He has 11 studio albums and has featured on countless songs, mm -hmm. many of which make up his most popular works. I mean, you guys know how big of a rapper Rick Ross is. Recently, yep, so. many people have seen him going viral for having a farm or through his very recent involvement with Drake. And Online fun fact, Ross though, y'all, I live actually 10 minutes away from Rick Ross. Uh, I stay in South Atlanta. I'm from South Atlanta. You know, shout out Clicko, the home team. Fall, fall, stand up. You know what we do. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm from South Atlanta. I stay 10 minutes. Probably, shit, maybe less than that. 10 minutes from Red Ross. So, everything he show y'all on Instagram, that shit be real. It be there. The For trucks, the cars, the land. Hard image per se, Crazy. But he has alluded to having a tougher life. Like on the song, I'm So Hood, when he says, Snitching ain't gonna cut no time, I'll murder one of you, rob you for your last, then off come the mask. And he has plenty of other songs where he alludes to selling drugs. Yeah, and 100%. Those lines. But somehow, even with all of his accolades, Rick Ross has managed to become known as one of the biggest liars in the game. And to understand sure. how, we gotta look more into his come up. In 1967, Rick Ross was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi. God, he didn't damn. live there long, though, as he eventually moved to Carroll City. Oh, he made 76. Where Ross was born. 1976, obviously. Of around 60,000 people and deals with a lot of problems that come with living in a bigger city. Okay. For Ross, these problems showed themselves in the visible crime and poverty in his for sure, area for that sure. begin to spark interest in the lifestyle he would portray in his music. That's One us, though. That's just us growing up in the, you know, persona, growing up. the show Miami Vice, which he claims to be a big fan of. While growing up, Ross himself mostly kept on the straight and narrow path, but regardless, at some level, he was influenced by his environment. Instead for of sure. making money in the common ways that many around him did, and in a way he would go on to rap, Ross worked at a car wash making about 30 bucks a day while working at the okay. car wash he saw a lot of expensive cars owned by a bunch of different types of people like millionaires dealers businessmen and for sure like as that. you should and he said he was very you know inspired go. by them so even though he was inspired early to make some money his steps toward becoming those he looked up to would not begin yet instead okay. he went to college this is where things start to get a little shaky for rick ross let's talk about it and a reason why damn rick ross went to college maybe thinking with the things ross raps about it's a little odd to think he was a man interested in further education all right. The world seemed to agree as they discovered he not only got a football scholarship to attend Albany State, but also was studying to become none HBCU. other than a criminal justice major. Quite the opposite wow. of what he rapped about living. To be fair though, he did drop out after his first year. But what followed his dropping out would only add on to the credibility issues that he would later come to face. Because wow. after he left Albany State at 19, he began working as a correctional officer at a South Florida prison. Well, his Crazy. time there only lasted 18 months, which to me still feels pretty long. That's a year and six months. Things he raps about the job was no joke and not a position that you could just start a day after signing to secure that position mr rose would have to go through a department of corrections wow. training academy yeah i remember seeing these pictures yeah. 40 hours of instruction that's over 20 days in training so he was clearly committed the ceo for sure rick ross's life was discovered in 2008 during his early popularity a photograph was released by a tmz adjacent website called the smoking gun that depicts a younger rick ross in uniform while working at the prison after getting exposed for years, he would just deny the validity of the picture, making outrageous claims, like saying yeah. that it was photoshopped. In countless interviews, he would be. But what we what we saying here, Ross? Though, like we know you capping, fool. You're a professional liar. And you know, as I get older, y'all, and I'm I'm gonna talk to my dad about it. My you know my dad a real OG. Shout out my dad. But I want to know, like, does he feel the same way about the people he was? kind of watching and listening to when he was growing up like they're professional liars they don't tell the truth i mean you could just look at some of the biggest names 
in the game right now. They talk street-ish, they talk tough, they be on that rah-rah, but look at what they're doing. Building they're the snitching. You know what I mean? So we all did a lot of different things to put us all in, uh, in, position. in position, right? And it's not the obvious. So if, if Rick Ross did work at one of these places, it wasn't for the obvious reason. Right, right. You know, it's a lot of gold mines around people's faces that people really don't know how to this clip was taken from like two old minutes of him beating around the bush claiming that he basically got the job just to get in with the people who were locked up eventually though he got to the point where he was comfortable enough to just straight up admit it so you were were you a correctional officer one point i was yeah so going all the way yeah i was gonna say yeah um maybe when i was 20 20 years old yeah since his college i was gonna say that shit crazy it didn't seem like his real goal was to become a double agent but who knows? After that, Ross considered working as a firefighter, but decided to work in construction so he could spend more time following his dream of making music. The boss's start in music was under the name Teflon to Don. After getting some traction like in the music industry and making some connections, including a significant friendship with our boy DJ Khaled, I like that name, though, Teflon Don. his name to Rick Ross. And this is another point in his career that would cause many to call him a liar, all because of his name. If you don't know a lot about the situation, you may wonder what's so bad about his name. And that's yeah. the thing. It wasn't his name. In fact, it was the name of a real person. That real person is the notorious former drug lord Freeway Rick Ross, or Freeway Ricky, or whatever else you want to call him. Yeah, Freeway sure. is known for his 1980s drug empire that dominated LA for years, and eventually led to his sentence of life in prison, ending yeah. with a successful appeal that freed him in 2009. And he wasn't some random dealer either. No, not at all. Freeway once boasted that his empire was so large they were making a million dollars a day. This was in the 80s, so if you adjust for inflation, that is almost $5 million of today's money coming in every day. He's mm -hmm. so big, in fact, that many say he's a major influence for the popular FX show Snowfall, specifically the protagonist Franklin Saint. And despite how extremely popular wow. Freeway Rick Ross was, Teflon Don still decided to pretty much copy his name. When, when the streets had that kind of love for you, the rappers find out. You know, they're some of the first people to find out about that, and, and he took it and he capitalized on it. To be fair, Ross did grow up around a lot of similar things that Freeway was partaking Yeah, but in. I want what the fuck is Rick Ross' real name, y'all? You know what I'm saying? He been lying to us for over 20 years. What the fuck is your name, fam? The, the key word is grew up That's around. insane. He was never doing it like Freeway as he has claimed in many songs. When this realization was made by the public, many people were upset again that Ross had seemingly lied about his past. And not only was the public upset, but Freeway himself, after being released from prison, decided to sue Rick Ross and WMG for stealing his name as well as his image. I hit him when we was in jail. We talked. Mm -hmm. and he was supposed to come and see me, and he never did. <clears throat> I wasn't really tripping about that. I got out, you know, started doing my own thing. The story came to me. He said, man, Universal, you $50 million. Mm. I said, go get it. Yeah. Just like that. That's all it was. But while Freeway and the public's frustration was reasonable, the court inevitably threw the case out in favor of Rick Ross based wow. on a First Amendment ruling. I wow. Enough, this lawsuit was one of Rick Ross's first encounters with the law. He did have a few minor charges here and there. Wait, 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 wait. Ho, ho. Did you just say... This was one of Rick Ross, the rapper Rick Ross. One of his first encounters with the law is being sued by the nigga Rick Ross. Oh, man, this is just... Damn, this shit's sticky. Oh, hell no. Nah. All of it came after his breakthrough That's success. That's goofy as hell. Corroborates anything close to the detailed Miami no matter how much money you got, style, you still a lame. It can't. K Dot told you that. That lame shit don't rinse off because you got money. Who, after getting into some type of beef with him, claimed that the drive by shooting Ross was involved in in 2013 was staged. While there's no solid evidence for that being the case, it appeared to be believable enough at the time for 50 to use it as a shot at Rick Ross because of his tattered credibility. Ironically, the beef between 50 and Ross allegedly started when 50 gave Ross a disgusting look at the BET Awards. It then escalated to some back and forth diss tracks in which 50 coined the popular nickname for Ross to his CEO yeah, past. And insane. it seemed like a lot of the issues that 50 had with Ricky Rose was his fake image. 50 is known for having countless different beefs and pursuing yeah, them to a yeah. level like no other. And Ross's lies were plenty of ammunition for 50 to take advantage well, why of. In this I, case, bro? 50 took more of a creative approach in his public dismantling of the boss through a short cartoon series titled Officer Ricky. <laughs> Officer Ricky, damn Rick, please help me up in this one. 
Damn. So clearly Ross had a lot of lies throughout his career. But yeah, it's important definitely. to note that even if Ross did lie, he obviously did a few things right as he is now one of the most successful rappers as well as entrepreneurs in the game. Yeah, and but now, what about you fraud? Making fun of him, calling him a correctional officer or the police or something like that. Now you know why. And just because Ricky Rose is a liar doesn't mean that his songs aren't still good. Uh, we bet y'all chapter two. Tyga is generally well liked in the what music do? has a long lineup of hit songs and collaborations. Well, Besides he Mr. Younger making Girls. a lot of songs that people would categorize as club music we didn't forget. for the ladies, he was not always this way. In fact, some would say his early style of music is unrecognizable to what it has evolved to today. His mm. career has had many ups and downs like many others, but he's thrived for almost 20 years now since his signing to Lil Wayne's label Young Money Entertainment in 2008. Years later, he would release one of his biggest hits, Rack City, that would yeah, catapult him into a new realm. That's the banger for sure. One of those collaborations was with none other than Chris Brown. And it was while he was working with Chris Brown that the controversy began. The controversy revolves around his beef with Lil Durk and the spotlight it put on Tyga's debatable authenticity. The beef right, took go. place around 2014 and was one that had been I remember this. Bit. It all started when the two would be in the studio with Chris Brown working on music and Tyga previewed a song Durk was on. In Durk's verse on the song, he mentioned having sex with Tyga's ex-wife, Black China. Okay. This interaction started what would go on to be a series of IG posts as well as disses back and forth between the two. During the exchange, Dirk went at Tyga for famously getting his chain snatched and pointed out sure. multiple times that he did not view the interactions as beef, but if Tyga wanted... Tyga's responses included calling Dirk broke, a nobody, and denying that he ever got Beef his chain real. snatched. There were some controversy, some videos online about someone snatching your chain. Can you clear that up for us? Man, that's all. That's all false, man. It's like... I, I just don't understand like eventually the beef fizzled out but it was the start of Tyga's image being exposed there was some more drama where people accused him of repping multiple different gangs but I don't know too much about that personally so I'm not going to get into it but how did this self-proclaimed Compton native go from making music that would get him signed by Lil Wayne having beef with Lil Durk and repping different gangs to songs like Taste the highest selling song of his career well it all starts with his so-called roots in Compton throughout his yes yeah, because I want to know y'all y'all let me know but you know I, I ain't really rock with Tyga Tyga was all right you know he was all right i'm not really rocking with him you know but i want to know how did he how did he actually come up you know how did he actually come up? In Compton and often discuss the hard times this brought many people believed him and even give him the credit that comes with growing up there but this was all changed when the truth of Tyga's upbringing was exposed all right, let's in 2012 do it. a video from MTV's Bustas which Tyga was featured on was leaked in the show Tyga competed in a set of pretty ridiculous challenges which even resulted in him getting booed off stage at one point in part because he didn't know how to pronounce the word amoeba during a freestyle Damn. But the real kicker came from Tyga's introduction on the show. Remember how Tyga has claimed that he grew up in Compton throughout his entire career? Okay. Well, during this introduction, he flips that narrative and pretty much his entire image on its head. Tyga, I got this name when I was young. My mom used to say I looked like Tyga Woods. So I just stuck with that. <laughs> Grew up, not too tough. Parents got a Range Rover, CL600, doing it big. Not too much hard, but I'm still street. Yeah, it's T-Y-G-A. They say I'm not her because I stay in the valley. They say I've never been in the alley. I tell them cats. Huh, I've been in the alley. First, Tyga has published... That is trash. Thank you, God, always. But then he revealed the truth of his name's origin, which was that his mom said he always looked like Tiger Woods, so he went with that. Second, he states that he grew up not too tough and that his parents drove a Range Rover as well as a Mercedes-Benz CL600, both of which are worth more than $50,000. And lastly, he exposes oh, himself saying he grew up in the valley rather than Compton. And with all the details that Tyga gave us, his experience was nothing like he had made it out to be. This comfortable, rich kid lifestyle is almost a complete opposite in comparison to the childhood he portrayed. Tyga went on to Ms. say Lid. the show was scripted and he was just doing and saying what he had to in order to succeed, but the damage to his reputation had already been done. The public struggled to believe Ms. Lid. Lid. we just talked made. about that. I didn't give all of that up for a show. We just talked about that. People began to just talked about that, how they misleading us. Member impersonator that Tyga was. Since that happened, Tyga was more open to admitting he wasn't about that life. Although some people did end up vouching for him. He was uh, born in Mermaid for something, and maybe, you know, he moved out of country. No, he grew 
grew up in Pasadena and then went to Compton when he was older because he was going to be a rapper. No, he is from Compton. We're not going to take away his street cred. Well, I'm going to not from Compton. Compton. He said on the reality show that he wasn't. So clearly there was a lot of debate around the subject. Ironically enough, by letting go of the image he had been trying so hard to portray and leaning into what he was actually good at, Tyga actually blew up even more. In Tyga's case, it seems like the public finding out about his come up may have been one of the better things for his career. I guess. I guess. Tyga, you still have. rapper who was hot in the 2000s with songs like Shoddy with... Plies? His career seemed to be riddled with lies that would later be exposed. Before he was a rapper, Plies was already fairly successful in high school. He played both ways as a wide receiver and defensive back on... Said ain't so, y'all. Not Plies. King was the valedictorian of his high school class and was named okay. the best dressed student of his class. Okay. After a pretty notable and awarded high school career, he went to college where he would continue to play football at Miami, Ohio as a wide okay. receiver. He okay. eventually made the decision to transfer back to his home state and attend University of Central Florida. But soon after his transfer, he dropped out to pursue music. This newfound interest came because of his stepbrother, Renell Lawrence Lavat, who established a record label called Big Gates Records. All right, all right, we're going, we're, we're working. In 2003. And ironically enough, he didn't even want to rap, but ended up being featured anyway. During a promo run for the song, Plies met an executive at Slip and Slide Records, where he would end up signing a deal that later granted connections for an Atlantic Records distribution deal. In the years following his first song, Plies dropped a few mixtapes that got enough attention to justify his first studio album. His album, The Real Testament, contained his first breakout song, and one many of you probably know Plies from, called Shoddy, featuring Okay, Kate yeah, that's the bank, that's a hit. album are a bunch of tracks that discuss both gang life and love. The contrast between the two subjects, as well as the alleged gang life subject matter itself, are a big red flag when it comes to the fraudulent credibility of Plies. Mm. Funny enough, around the time of his first album release, Plies featured on the song I mentioned earlier with Rick Ross called I'm So Hood. In the song, Plies is pants hanging off me now because my pistol heavy, and they say I'm fed bound. They call me high risk. I'm a full-blooded goon. Lames make me sick. Following his first major successful project Crazy. and a plethora of other popular features, Plies would continue his rise by putting out three more studio albums. But it was around the time of his third album that the public's magnifying glass looked his way. And when they looked, they found something pretty interesting. Yeah, talk to it. after the release of Plies' second album, Definition of Real, an investigation by Hip Hop DX began. They decided mm -hmm. to look into Plies' authenticity. And they were arguing that when Plies used his words like real or goon he was referring to being hard or a gangster others also said that the stories he said in his music were supposed to be reflective of his lifestyle yeah but y'all why do this though why do that is what i not only mislead the people but why why fabricate what's going on? why why wow. operated their investigation is it for a the assumption that everything he said in his songs he lived is it what for the money was that plies had no criminal it, it gotta be for the money county they then went on to search other surrounding counties in florida's public criminal records never system. heard they of discovered that in total plies had only ever been arrested twice in his home state of florida so you might be thinking getting Crazy. arrested twice isn't something to ignore or scoff at but it turns out these arrests occurred two years prior this means that they were right around the release of his first album so it kind of defeats the whole come up story he had portrayed in songs mm. and obviously a criminal record is nothing to be sought after and there's definitely a real chance he was never caught but with this information and more to come it's hard to see plies as a common criminal and on top right. of that his right. arrest for, for resisting an officer without violence and his second was because of an incident that occurred at a concert of his i'm not going to go super deep into the concert drama but there were some shots let off by plies brother which led to his car getting searched mm. which led to him getting a misdemeanor for possession mm. of a concealed weapon it wasn't oh. a big deal though as he just posted bail and pleaded no contest back to him about the Damn. access investigation the only other things they found were a few traffic violations Cross. And as Hip Hop DX states, though, none of these county databases nor the FDLE's report include any juvenile criminal record that might have existed Never heard prior of him. to his 18th birthday. They also point out that first person accounts of criminal activities on Ply's part are conspicuously scarce in his raw rhymes. They then go on to talk about wow. how many of his songs seem like stories from other people's perspectives. But there are the occasional past tense references to what appear to be the claims of his own criminal activity. That's One very example sad, can be found during his lament on the suffering his alleged criminal activities caused his mother on running my mama crazy in which he recollects remember the nights me sitting up in a cold cell i'm waking you up out your sleep it's me calling you from jail well passionate his verses claim that he was ever in a cold cell now appear to be untruthful That's according to the fdle's report plies was never in jail for any period of time prior to 2006 That's they also sad, that plies has also produced a contemptuous image for himself on the screen 
including his portrayal as a high rolling drug dealer in the video clip for Worth Going Fedfo. Another issue for Ply's credibility happened when Jamie Foxx famously discussed a situation he had with him. It all started with an initial phone call with Ply's, whereas Fox states, even Ply's voice was a big shock from what he was expecting due to the content of his music. Mm. Uh, Ply's. I didn't know anything about Ply's. I only heard the, I only heard the, the good record. I'm on the set with Plies to do this 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 video, and when I heard Plies talk to me, it blew my mind. Cause when I got on the phone, I was trying to get where he was. Yo, what's up, nigga? What we doing with this video, cuz? And he was like, first of all, I want to make sure that we have the particulars. Oh <laughs> you know, shit! Right. Further down the road, when the two were together on a set for a video, a group of guys would approach in what Fox details an intimidating manner. When they approached. Plies, the dream, and both of their security teams ran. Jamie said he approached the group and calmed things down, but Plies' actions had already been burned into Fox's mind. So I get out there, we can't find Plies. And I understand why. You know why? Because he was afraid for his life. Because you never know, he could have he ran to the bathroom. As it turns out, the approaching group contained the rapper 40 Lock, who recounts a similar interaction going down, saying he wasn't even there to cause any issues. That's crazy. This jumped up and ran himself in the bathroom. We weren't coming to do shit to that nigga. He just jumped up and ran, cuz. You know what I mean? We was coming to hit him up and talk to him, let him know what's going on. Like, da 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 da. That's sad. Nigga, we, we didn't come to sock this nigga do nothing. As long as he was set up file, you talking some real niggas. But regardless, following the incident, a beef was started that resulted in Plies releasing his diss letter to the industry. And then 40's response returned to sender. It's important to note that Plies denies any of this going down the way that Jamie Foxx does. But to be fair, who would even admit to it going down like that? Yeah, yeah that, that shit's out bad. Is on the line. Plies even spoke on the incident saying, People lie to enhance their situation, which is pretty ironic. With all of this being evident, Plies is still generally well-liked and well-regarded for his intelligence. Some say his retelling of stories, many of which allegedly are rumored to come from his family members rather than himself, pose a negative effect and take advantage of those who actually go through what he talks about in his song. I can't probably this now face you, bro. I don't seen understand on social media, that, yeah. A series of comedic, light-hearted posts that give advice to the youth as well as dropping the occasional song or project here and there. So if there's anything to be learned from this video it's that I can't, it's man more of the story y'all i can't understand that fake shit bro what's the point like be for real like i understand you in it for money but look at what you're doing to your community your people and i'm not trying to get on no conscious stuff guys but i'm just saying for the simple fact that we got all this fake it, it's so much everything is fake the shit is wwe from nba to the man this shit it ain't real dog it ain't real the stuff you grew up on, you thought was real. These rappers, the uh, musicians, the NBA, NFL, baseball, man. None of this shit real, man. That's why it's like you got to wake up and open, unlock your third eye. Because it's just that bad out here, man. It's really that bad. And that's why I always say how hip-hop misled me and rap misled me. I'm unlearning, I'm unlearning behaviors every single day. Every single day. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you're new, guys. Shout out to Matty Balls, no Diddy, for, you know, this absolute banger, man, giving us new perspective, new light, and just more real, genuine content. I'm signing out, y'all. Love.